Good afternoon. My name is Nicole, and I will be your conference operator today. At this time, I would like to welcome everyone to the Respiratory Care Patient Assessment and Care Plan Development Conference Call. All lines have been placed on mute to prevent any background noise. After the speaker's remarks, there will be a question and answer session. If you would like to ask a question during this time, simply press star, then the number one on your telephone keypad. To withdraw the question, press the pound key. Thank you. Ms. Grace Richard, you may be in your conference. Thank you, Nicole. And I want to thank everyone for joining us today. We're happy to have you with us, and we're very excited to uh, have David Shelady join us to talk to you about his new textbook. Uh, Dr. Shelady is one of the authors of the text. Also joining me today is Rhonda Dearborn, our executive editor, and my name is Grace Richards, the marketing manager for health professions at Jones and Bartlett Learning. I'd like to do just a brief intro to tell you a little bit about the book. Um, Respiratory Care Patient Assessment and Care Plan Development was just published in December. Um, it is a hardcover book, it is full color inside, and it is a first edition. Also included with every new textbook is a bound-in access code for our Navigate to Advantage Access resources. Uh, these are great resources for students, and I'll tell you a little bit more about that uh, during the presentation but the Navigate 2 package provides a complimentary ebook as well as practice activities and graded assessments, all within an online learning management system uh, that's proprietary to Jones and Bartlett Learning. It is based on Moodle and it does uh, integrate with other learning management systems such as Blackboard and a few others. Um, as I mentioned, the two authors of this textbook are Dr. David Shelley and Dr. Jay Peters. Dr. Shelley is a professor and dean of the School of Health Professions at the University of Texas Health Science Center. He is also dean emeritus and professor of respiratory care, clinical sciences, and health systems management at Russ University. Dr. Shelley has more than 30 years of experience teaching at both the community college and the university level. He was the founding chair of the respiratory care department at the University of Texas Health Science Center and has held positions as program chair at St. Petersburg College and acting chair and program director at Georgia State University. Dr. Shelley is a past president of AARC, a past commissioner on the Commission of Accreditation for Respiratory Care, COARC, and is current VP of External Affairs for the Coalition for Baccalaureate and Graduate Respiratory Therapy Education, as well as a board member of the Association of Schools of Allied Health Professions, ASAHP. He has authored over 100 journal articles, abstracts, and book chapters, and continues to be active in teaching and research. Dr. Jay Peters is a professor and chief of the Division of Pulmonary and Critical Care Medicine at the School of Medicine at the University of Texas Health Science Center. Dr. Peters has many years of experience as a medical director of respiratory care and critical care services and continues to be active in teaching pulmonary fellows and respiratory care students. Dr. Peters is also active with national and local organizations for asthma management and COPD. He has served on the steering committee of the Respiratory Care Network of the America, American College of Chest Physicians. Uh, everyone here at Jones and Bartlett is very honored to have worked with these talented expert authors uh, having experience in both academia and medicine. And before I begin, I just wanted to share uh, some statements that we've received from instructors. Um, as I mentioned, this text was just published, and since it's been uh, out and reviewed, and as well as the review process during development, uh, we've been hearing a lot of great things. And I'll quickly recap some of these statements. Instructors are very pleased that this text provides foundational information needed to develop respiratory care therapists that will be able to function as critical thinkers, and that's really important. Um, instructors really like the use of case studies to help apply critical thinking skills, and as well as the case studies, instructors uh, are liking the use of evidence-based research and literature review and the coverage of key content um, and utilizing this information for patient assessment and care plan development. And I really think the last quote says it all. Uh, this text is much more in-depth than any other book I have read on care plan development. Um, now, I'm a little bit biased, but I think I will have to agree. I think Dr. Shelley and Dr. Peters 
have developed a very comprehensive yet accessible text with valuable teaching and learning tools for both instructors and students. And at this point, uh, I'd like to introduce Dr. Shelley, and he will discuss the approach of his text and provide an overview of the content and layout of the chapters and some of the supportive uh, teaching and learning materials of this text. Then I'll return to provide you with some information about the Navigate 2 resources which accompany the text. And finally, we will have a question and answer session where you can ask us your questions. So thank you again for joining us, everyone. And now I'd like to introduce David Shelley. Okay, Grace. Thank you so much for that very, very kind introduction. Uh, and good afternoon to everybody. Now, as Grace mentioned, I've been teaching respiratory care for a long time, and Jay Peters has been teaching respiratory care for a long time. Uh, we primarily teach respiratory therapy students, but we also do continuing education, uh, and I've had uh, the privilege of being involved in physician assistant uh, education and taught PA students and medical students, uh, and Jay continues to be very active uh, in teaching pulmonary fellows uh, and future medical directors, uh, as well as respiratory therapy students right here at UT Health Science Center. Uh, and basically, there's a lot of good material out there on patient assessment, uh, and there are a lot of books to choose from. Uh, but, uh, and, and I've taught patient assessment myself, the, the classes, uh, and I've taught uh, applied respiratory physiology and critical care. And the big weakness, Jay and I thought, of the existing uh, texts that are available is uh, we didn't think they really did a good job of integrating the uh, process of doing a, patient, a full patient assessment with developing care, care plans. Uh, and we wanted to try and do that in, in a systematic way in a book uh, that was accessible to respiratory therapists uh, and would be particularly useful for students and instructors, but useful for current practitioners as well, uh, as well as uh, other audiences. So our goal was to develop a comprehensive guide in the evaluation of the patient and integrate that with the development and implementation of appropriate evidence-based uh, care plans. Uh, and the book starts off and it talks about the purpose of patient assessment uh, and then it systematically guides uh, the reader or the student through the process of, of doing a full assessment from reviewing uh, the medical record uh, to conducting a thorough patient history and, uh, and physical uh, to evaluating the appropriate uh, diagnostic studies and then developing and implementing a respiratory care plan. So again, the goal was to ga uh, bridge the gap between assessment and treatment uh, so that the student or the practitioner could uh, learn how to apply assessment skills uh, to the development and implementation of evidence-based care plans. And so we spent a fair amount of time uh, early on in the book uh, uh, talking about uh, critical diagnostic thinking uh, and evidence-based medicine. Now, the book has a lot of features, which we think are, are kind of nice. Uh, we do have our uh, uh, traditional chapter objectives and, a, and an outline uh, in key terms, uh, but we have hundreds of, of color illustrations and tables uh, and figures, uh, including a lot of little boxed section uh, with notes, uh, and we've tried to integrate uh, uh, current clinical practice guidelines in terms of all of our clinical focus materials. Uh, one of the uh, new features that we've put in is a, a little boxed RC insights, uh, and these are essentially little uh, uh, rules of the thumb or uh, clinician tips. Uh, here's just an example one uh, of one uh, related to uh, incentive spirometry. Uh, and how could you estimate at the bedside a patient's inspiratory capacity. And then we've integrated throughout clinical uh, focus exercises, and these should be pretty current and pretty evidence-based practice oriented, uh, and these are intended for uh, instructors and, and students to use as exercises, uh, giving them sort of little mini cases. Uh, this first example is out of the second chapter on application of incentive spirometry and just talks about a patient situation in which incentive spirometry might be indicated and then how do you set your goals uh, and how do you estimate an, a, a predicted inspiratory capacity and what sort of a volume goal uh, should you then attempt uh, for this particular patient. Now, 
Each chapter concludes with a summary and then a, uh, a fairly in-depth set of key points. And, and these key points are pretty succinct and they're pretty specific and hopefully uh, they will provide students uh, and faculty with a, a, a real good summary of some of the key ideas uh, or, or key concepts or uh, uh, key information that students need to know about that particular content area. Now, the goal, as I said, was to, to provide students and clinicians uh, uh, taking care of patients with cardiopulmonary problems a comprehensive guide to patient assessment. Uh, so uh, we spend a lot of time on patient evaluation, and then uh, we try and integrate the implementation of appropriate evidence-based uh, care plans. Uh, so the focus of the book is assessment, diagnostic evaluation, and treatment. And the primary audience, as I said, is the respiratory therapist or respiratory therapy student, the, the therapist-to-be. Uh, and we really wanted to provide them the knowledge and skills needed for advanced practice. Uh, and as, as Jay and I were working through this, you know, uh, we've had a, a, a lot of work. Jay helped me with ACCP to start identifying uh, competencies, uh, tasks and procedures that would be needed by a truly advanced practice respiratory therapist. Uh, and we tried to make this book broad enough uh, so that it would cover uh, true advanced practice. Uh, so I, I, we hope that this book is going to be a great value to you guys as instructors and to your students. Uh, but we also uh, put information in there uh, that it would be useful to anybody who prescribes respiratory care, uh, PAs, uh, physicians, uh, nurse practitioners, and for all healthcare uh, workers interested in optimizing outcomes for patients uh, with heart and lung problems. And then throughout, we've, we've, we've done, I think, a pretty good job um, depending on how you count, maybe up to two-thirds of the board exams is about assessment and care plans. Um, and so we think we've done a pretty good job of including the content that students will need to pass their uh, NBRC exams. Now, this gives you the layout of the whole book, uh, from the introduction uh, to the last chapter. Uh, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to spend a little bit of time going into a, a little bit uh, of detail about the first few chapters uh, and then just some of the highlights in some of the following chapters. Uh, but uh, this gives you the scope uh, and we start off with an introduction which has got some information that a lot of respiratory therapy students and a lot of respiratory therapists just aren't aware of. Uh, and then we talk a great deal about development and implementation of care plans and then the systematic approach from review of the patient's medical record to the history to the assessment. Uh, some great, I, I hope you're going to like these. Uh, I think we've got one of the best chapters on assessment of oxygenation that you're likely to find, then assessment of ventilation, uh, then blood gases and oximetry, uh, then lab studies, cardiac assessment, imaging, uh, pulmonary function, uh, special procedures, acute and critical care monitoring, uh, and then uh, sleep uh, and neonatal and pediatric assessment. Uh, and a nice summary there. Uh, not intended to replace your neonatal books, uh, but I think if you take a look at that book, it's a, it's a pretty good summary. Now, as I'm, as I'm describing, the book has a natural flow. And I'm going to give you some of the details of the first few chapters just so you kind of get a sense. So it begins with setting the stage, and that's the, the purpose of, of patient assessment, uh, why it is so important. Uh, a little bit about health in general. Uh, for instance, uh, we talk about um, the drivers of the healthcare system, uh, and I think all practitioners need to know that, and all practitioners probably need to know that the healthcare uh, reform was all about the triple aim of health, uh, which included stuff like population health. And these are things that respiratory therapists uh, ought to know something about. And then we spend a fair amount of time on evidence-based practice and sources and types of evidence. And then how do you do evidence-based practice? And then how do you think through uh, recommendations for therapy? Uh, and uh, there's a section in that very beginning in Chapter 1 on critical diagnostic thinking uh, and steps to establish a diagnosis. Uh, and then some common and less common assessment findings and typical presentation of common respiratory disorders. 
Here's some examples of some of the content uh, detail that's provided just in that first chapter. Uh, and here's a table on factors that determine individual health. Uh, and these are things if we're thinking about a patient's overall health and well-being or if we're thinking about population health uh, or we're thinking about uh, the direction of healthcare reform in terms of health, wellness, and chronic disease management, these are some things that all of us uh, need to be aware of. Uh, everything from uh, indoor, indoor air pollution uh, to um, access uh, to full-service grocery stores in terms of nutrition, uh, to social networks and social support, uh, to uh, physical activity, uh, to uh, access to medical care, to sort of environmental stressors, uh, to uh, health-related behaviors. And this is just a conceptual framework for addressing the issue of population health. Uh, so this is the kind of information that's not typically seen by respiratory therapists. Uh, but one thing that has really, really struck me, uh, while I was at Rush University Medical Center, I got to start a PA program. And the PAs are learning this stuff, and we need to know it too. At any rate, next slide. Now, this is uh, just a little bit of information, but it shows you some of the detail on evidence-based practice. Uh, and it pr pr uh, provides sort of a stepwise approach uh, for students or faculty how, or, or practitioners, how would you do uh, evidence-based practice? So the first step is what is the patient problem uh, that's being considered? The second step is what diagnostic method, treatment, medications, or procedures are being considered? Then we go on to the third step, which is are there any alternative treatments or interventions that might be tried? Uh, what are we trying to fix? What are the outcomes we're looking for? Uh, and then how do we do uh, a literature review uh, in terms of uh, answering the questions that we've developed. And then if we go on to the next slide, what are some of the sources uh, for uh, evidence-based practice? And then here's just an example of some of the online resources ranging from things like Medline uh, to uh, Cochrane Database to UpToDate. And then uh, how do we evaluate the evidence? And so here's the evidence, best evidence pyramid, which kind of hierarchically uh, ranks evidence. And then over in the right, we've uh, inserted a nice little table on rating the evidence, uh, which was uh, published as part of the AERC clinical practice guidelines by one of our faculty here at UT Health Science Center. The section on critical diagnostic thinking is about how do physicians, nurse practitioners, PAs, and ultimately respiratory therapists uh, uh, establish a patient's diagnosis. Uh, and it reviews sort of the key elements of uh, critical diagnostic thinking. And this is material that was developed originally by Jamie Stoller, and I got to write the first chapter in his book on critical diagnostic thinking. Uh, and it's sort of a stepwise approach on how to do that. Uh, and then after you get all the information, uh, and as you consider uh, what may or may not be the possible explanation or the diagnosis, uh, what are some common and less common causes of respiratory care assessment findings? And so this table is just one small part of a larger table, uh, which gives you a great bit, uh, bit of detail in terms of common and less common causes of uh, typical clinical manifestations of respiratory disease. Now, the book then goes on, and that's just the first chapter. The book then goes on into uh, development and implementation of evidence-based care plans in chapter two. So again, an introduction to care plans. What are they? How do you define them? Uh, and then how do you develop a care plan? And then it goes through a, a, a fair amount of detail on uh, typical respiratory care plans to address specific problems, like uh, uh, maintaining oxygenation, treat or prevent bronchospasm, mobilize and remove secretions, lung expansion therapy, uh, mechanical ventilatory support, diagnostic testing, to include uh, respiratory care uh, plan format. Uh, this is just a little table that uh, illustrates one small section of the chapter, which talks about types of care plans provided in respiratory care, uh, ranging from basic respiratory care to critical care to diagnostic testing, uh, to uh, special procedures, including smoking cessation. 
this is another little uh, figure from that second chapter which talks about the process from the order for respiratory care being received to an assessment, uh, including the chart, patient, and physical assessment, uh, to establishing goals, uh, to selecting therapy, to notifying the physician, to delivering the care, to charting, to modifying, uh, and reevaluating based on the patient response. And the, the, this particular chapter goes through a great deal of detail in terms of the indications for therapies and diagnostic testing, and this is as best uh, we could in every case where it was available based on clinical practice guidelines and, and, and provides some, uh, a lot of detail on treatment of common problems ranging from respiratory failure to bronchospasm and mucosal edema. Uh, for instance, in the asthma section, uh, there is a whole section on management of acute asthma exacerbation to include uh, medication dosages for acute asthma. In the section on COPD, there is uh, management of stable COPD to include pharmacologic treatment of stable COPD uh, and COPD medications, and then a section on management of COPD exacerbation. Now, the book then goes, so we start off with Chapter 1 setting the stage uh, and talking about, uh, you know, what, what, what respiratory care assessment's all about, and then some of the broader things like drivers of the healthcare system, uh, and then how do you do evidence-based uh, care, and then how do you, uh, what is critical diagnostic thinking to developing care plans. Uh, and then the book goes through uh, a great deal of detail in Chapter 3 on review of the existing data in the medical record, then the patient interview, then the physical assessment, and then ordering and evaluation of diagnostic studies uh, needed. And there's a great deal of depth in here. For example, just on the review of the medical record, this is something folks sometimes don't spend enough time on. Uh, so, yes, the, uh, the, the chapter covers things like charting and different sections of the medical record, but it provides a great deal of detail. So when it goes through a uh, review of the medical director, it talks about admitting diagnoses that are commonly seen in hospitalized patients and those that are of particular importance to respiratory therapists. Uh, and then it, and when it talks about medications, it doesn't just talk about respiratory therapy medications. It talks about cardiac and cardiovascular agents. It talks about sedatives, hypnotics, narcotics, and pain medications, systemic steroids, neuromuscular blocking agents, airway medication installations, drugs that may cause hemoglobinemia, reversal agents uh, for, uh, like Naxalon, uh, and so forth. So there's a great deal of detail in here that should be very useful uh, to all practitioners related to respiratory care. Uh, then uh, the same level of detail is applied to the interview, the physical assessment, and uh, the sections on oxygenation, ventilation, and blood gases, as well as laboratory studies. Here's some example of some of the uh, uh, resources that are uh, included within all of the chapters. For example, here's a box on common causes and classification of cough. Uh, and, you know, what is an acute cough? What is a chronic cough? What are the most common causes of chronic cough? And, of course, they're listed here. Um, and Table 4-5 is an example of the sorts of questions the practitioner or the student should ask uh, related to uh, secretions and sputum production. Uh, and if you were going to do a patient interview, what should you ask the patient? And here are six questions uh, and that would be included, and that's just one section of that particular table. Uh, then possible causes of wheezing, uh, and they're all listed out in terms of extrathoracic and interthoracic, uh, as well as common causes of hemoptysis uh, and causes of lower airway obstruction, and just as some examples of the level of detail provided uh, within uh, the body of the chapters in this particular chapter is Chapter 4, which is on history and patient interview. Um, just as uh, some examples of some more of the tables and figures and boxes provided in just Chapters 4 and 5, and Chapter 4 is history and Chapter 5 is physical, interview questions for cough, uh, common causes of dyspnea, uh, actually providing you with dyspnea rating scales of several different types, items to include in a patient history, both a general history and a pulmonary history. Uh, there's a very nice detailed section on how to do a medical history for an asthma patient. 
Uh, there's a nice detailed section on how to do how to interview a patient for uh, smoking and tobacco use. Uh, there's a nice inset on smoking cessation techniques, uh, occupational lung disease, uh, steps in physical exam, uh, and inset within that, for example, when we talk about vital signs, we talk about treatment of hypertension, which is a huge comorbidity on many of our patients. Uh, then uh, things like uh, BMI and obesity, and that's a comorbidity for many of our patients. Mental status and neurologic exam has things from, ranging from the Ramsey sedation scale uh, to the mini mental state exam, uh, then chest inspection, palpation, percussion, and so forth. Uh, some detail on heart sounds. Uh, and then, of course, uh, rounding out the physical assessment, providing physical findings of common cardiopulmonary disease. Uh, these are just a few of the many, many uh, illustrations found in, in the book. Uh, for example, there's uh, the illustrations associated with physical assessment and breath sounds uh, to give everybody a clear idea of the anatomy, underlying anatomy of the lung. Uh, one of the slides from uh, kyphosis or kyphoscoliosis. Um, one of the slides from assessment of oxygenation explaining uh, ventilation perfusion relationships. Uh, and then a, a slide explaining uh, what happens to oxygenation uh, with a physiologic shunt uh, due to alveolar filling uh, in a patient breathing room air. And then what would happen if you took that same patient and put them on 100% oxygen. Here are some of the uh, slides from uh, the assessment of ventilation section. Uh, looking at things like uh, pressure volume curves uh, and the progression of respiratory failure. A uh, few sample slides uh, from the blood gas section looking at arterial blood gases uh, and blood gas assessment and uh, use of arterial lines and pulse oximetry. And then a few slides, just a couple short samples of some of the information that's provided in the lab studies uh, in this particular section, uh, for instance, on uh, complete blood count and then on uh, a microbiology. Then the book goes on. Uh, so we've gone through uh, why do we do it. Uh, we've done respiratory care plan development. We've done review of the medical record, uh, patient history, patient physical, uh, then assessment of oxygenation, ventilation, laboratory studies, uh, and then uh, and arterial blood gases. Uh, and then we move on to cardiac monitoring. Uh, with some uh, uh, detail that goes into specific cardiac disorders. Uh, and then the section on uh, chest imaging is quite extensive. This is one of our largest chapters uh, and includes a lot of images, and it's not just chest radiographs. It's got CT, MRI, uh, ultrasound uh, in the imaging of the respiratory care patient. And interspersed with this, as we've tried to do throughout the whole book, uh, we've put some very specific information. For example, when we talk about pneumonia in the imaging section, uh, we show you x-rays, but we also talk about the overall diagnosis and treatment of pneumonia. Uh, for example, when we talk about EKG monitoring, we talk about recognition of myocardial infarction uh, and some of the key things in terms of treatment. Uh, then it moves on and does pulmonary function testing. Now, the nice thing about the pulmonary function testing uh, chapter is it is about assessment of pulmonary function results. It's not how to do the test. It's what the tests are and then what do they mean and how do you interpret them. Uh, same deal with Chapter 13, which goes on uh, to look at uh, bronchoscopy and other diagnostic studies. Then in the critical care monitoring section, um, a little bit of, about a general monitoring in the critical care unit, but particularly as it re relates to patients receiving mechanical ventilatory support. Uh, and then uh, sleep studies and evaluation of the cardiopulmonary patient. And then, as I mentioned earlier, uh, we've got a nice uh, summary of assessment of the neonatal and pediatric patient. Here are just a few of the images. Uh, for instance, in the uh, cardiac assessment section, we've got a lot of EKGs uh, and uh, a lot of nice uh, images which explain EKGs. Uh, in the imaging section, we've got a lot of imaging uh, slides, uh, but we also talk a little bit about the spectrum of imaging and everything from uh, ultrasound uh, to uh, uh, CT, MR, uh, infusion imaging and uh, radiation sources. 
and and then uh, for example here we've just got a little bit on about the chest film and then we've got a little bit about the uh, uh, pencil sign in a pediatric patient. Here are some of the um, um, figures uh, from the imaging uh, uh, chapter um, talking about sectional imaging uh, and uh, some other more advanced imaging techniques including ultrasound. So uh, we've gone through a lot of trouble to get some good films and some good slides and to try and integrate those uh, into the entire assessment process so that we're not just presenting the images but we're telling you about the disease state or condition that that particular imaging uh, technique is good for assessing and then what the assessment means and a little and place it in a little bit broader context in terms of diagnosis and, and, and treatment of some of those disease states or conditions. Uh, a few slides here just to show you some of the stuff that's found in the pulmonary function section, uh, some of the stuff that's found in the bronchoscopy section uh, and thoracentesis, uh, some of the slides uh, from the uh, uh, critical care and mechanical ventilatory uh, monitoring section and then uh, the sleep studies section as well as uh, a slide from the last chapter uh, related to, to neonatal assessment. And again, these are just a small sample of, of the many, many, many slides and figures found in the book. Now, uh, we've tried to think about this, and you know, as I said, I've taught assessment uh, for years, and I, I, I teach pretty much every year, um, either physiology or, and, or assessment, uh, but we've provided a lot of resources that we hope are going to be useful for you. We've provided detailed PowerPoints. Now, um, we put a lot of information in the PowerPoint slides. You can use them as is, you can post them, or you can uh, modify them in any way that you see fit. Uh, we spent a lot of time with our test banks, uh, providing about a thousand different items across the, all of the chapters in the book and tried to uh, cover the full spectrum of the content in the book uh, and tried to make the questions uh, similar to the kinds of things that students are going to encounter on their board exams. Uh, we provided you a sample syllabus which you can modify uh, any way you want and use within a, a course. Uh, we provided you an image uh, bank and in addition to these things uh, we've provided some, uh, uh, we're going to provide some uh, PDF handouts uh, and you can print these PDF handouts uh, and use them in class uh, or you can have the students do exercises on each other using these uh, some of these PDF handouts, or even better, uh, you can send the students off to see real patients uh, using some of these uh, forms and checklists. Uh, for example, uh, we've got uh, a detailed respiratory care format, which the student could then go and do an assessment on a patient and uh, design a respiratory care uh, uh, plan. Uh, we've got a, a, a detailed form for doing a full general medical history. Uh, a history related to cough, a history related to sputum production, uh, interview questions related to hemoptysis. Uh, and as opposed to a full patient history, how do you do a chest illness history? Uh, and there's some example handouts on that. Uh, and so hopefully uh, these handouts are things that you can actually use in the classroom for practice exercises or group work, uh, or you can uh, have the students uh, actually use them in the clinical environment. And the other thing that I really encourage folks to, to do, and I've been doing this for several years now, for my courses, what I typically do is I record uh, my courses using a screen capture technique like Camtasia, and I record all my lectures in advance. Uh, and I have the students view the lectures before they come to class. Uh, and what that does, it allows me in class to concentrate on um, clinical exercises, or uh, 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 questions or to go over the material and it gives me a great deal of freedom to engage the class because I'm not worried about just delivering the content. And between the book and the slides, uh, you shouldn't have to worry too much about delivering content and hopefully can take the students to the next level in terms of critical thinking uh, and uh, uh, critical uh, uh, and problem solving related to assessment and care plan development. Thank you.
you, David. I think that was a superb overview of this fabulous text. And I, I, I'm just so excited about all the detail and images and everything that we're providing for instructors and students. Um, some of the, the instructor resources are also available in the Navigate 2 platform, and I wanted to talk a little bit about that as well. Um, also, the, the student resources and uh, the test banks are in here. As I mentioned, each new textbook comes along with a code for the ebook and the Navigate resources online. Uh, if a student would prefer an ebook only version, a digital only version, that's available at half the cost of the textbook. So for this Navigate Advantage access, it would only be $49.95. Uh, these resources are going to be released shortly within the next week or two. Anyone that has purchased the textbook already um, was able to log into their account and we are notifying people once these online Navigate 2 resources are available. And as I mentioned, uh, Navigate 2 is a learning management system based on the Moodle platform. Um, it provides the ebooks, the study center, homework and testing, and a dashboard for instructors uh, with the pre-populated quizzes reporting into a gradebook. Um, within the ebook, there are knowledge check questions within the readings, as well as the end of chapter graded quizzes. There is a section with flashcards and practice activities for study tools for the students, as well as the quantitative assessments that I mentioned that are pre graded and loaded into the gradebook the um, chapter quizzes, midterm, and final. And just to give you a look um, at what Navigate 2 looks like, this is a, a different uh, Navigate course, uh, if you will, and we have the lessons pathway and the learning tools pathway. Within this lessons pathway, the student can click into an individual chapter and begin to read the chapter and uh, take the assessments or work on the practice activities within each chapter. Over on the left is a course announcement section, and instructors can uh, enter different quiz dates or assignment dates into the calendar. Students can have their own reminders in there as well. Uh, just to take a look at what uh, one of our ebooks look like. Again, this is a different uh, ebook, but students can navigate through the ebook with uh, the arrows on the sides down here in the center, or uh, click on a page. Or if they're on an iPad, they can flip up the pages with their fingers. Um, we also have enabled some note taking through uh, clicking on this little paper clip and a little post-it note comes up. Uh, students can even add an a audio message uh, and save it within the ebook. So if they want to leave themselves a voice message about something that they're reading or to remember to do something, they can do that. There's also uh, highlighting and underlining available. Uh, students can search for keywords in the glossary, the full uh, outline of the chapter is available, and students can add bookmarks to certain pages to come back to them uh, at a later date. And in the Learning Tools pathway, students can access the Study Center directly. So if, uh, say, the instructor assigned Chapter 1 and Chapter 2, and the students wanted to go in and take a look at the flashcards for both of those chapters at once, um, and look at the lecture outlines for, for both of those chapters at once. They could quickly get to um, those through the study center versus the ebook. And within the ebook, as I mentioned, um, a little green icon appears where they can answer questions after they've read something. This is a great way to test their uh, assessment and retention as they're going through the book. Some of the different types of questions. This one is a multiple choice question. Sometimes it could be a matching question or a drag and drop question. This is an example of one of the flashcards. Typically the description is listed at the bottom and the students uh, can type the term up at the top. If they don't know the term, they can check the answer and it will uh, give them the correct answer. And as I mentioned, all of the preloaded assessments, uh, quantitative assessments, are automatically graded. This is an example of gradebook with uh, a few students here and some quiz grades. Uh, instructors can also take a look at student activity levels, how long they've spent in certain sections. And we also have an option that will plot your whole class on a, a, a grade, uh, on a 
axis with a grade level, and you can see uh, where the norm is, who's a little bit above, who's a little bit below, who might need some help. And I would like to turn it over to Dr. Shelley to do a quick recap, and then we can take any questions that you might have. Okay. Well, well thank you, Grace. Well, this is just a quick overview of the, of the book. And basically, uh, in the resources, we think we've provided all the content needed to pass the NBRC entry level and advanced respiratory care exams. Um, we've done our very best to incorporate the latest clinical practice guidelines. Uh, we spend a, a, a little bit of time making sure folks understand critical diagnostic thinking uh, and then apply it to specific patient situations. We've got a lot of nice features in terms of uh, objectives uh, and full color illustrations, photos and tables, uh, clinical practice, uh, clinical focus exercises, uh, which provide uh, opportunities for the student to practice uh, critical thinking and, and problem solving in, in a mini case sort of uh, format. The respiratory care insights uh, are sort of useful tips or, uh, or key points, if you will, or uh, rules of the thumb uh, that can provide uh, the clinician with useful information on assessment and management. Uh, and then lots of uh, resources, including uh, all the PowerPoints, test banks, sample syllabus, syllabus imaging bank, uh, and then Navigant 2, uh, which Grace has just uh, talked to you all about. So uh, we, we hope that this book uh, meets a real need. Uh, Jay and I have uh, shown the book around. I mean, even some of the pulmonary fellows say, wow, this is a cool book. Where can I get one of these? So hopefully it is gonna, it's going gonna, it's gonna to be something special. Uh, and ultimately, I hope it's going to uh, help us uh, further advance uh, the profession of respiratory care. Thank you, Dr. Shelley. Uh, I definitely think you and Dr. Peters have put together a fabulous comprehensive book with all these great resources, and we are excited to hear continued feedback from instructors. Uh, as I said, the, the, so far the comments have all been very, very positive. Um, I also wanted to mention that we, once the Navigate 2 resources are live, we will be able to provide uh, demos for instructors, either on an individual basis, and we're going to record kind of a walkthrough demo so people can take a look at this specific uh, Navigate 2 uh, resources and, and what those involve online. So that will be available. Um, also, we, will, we are recording this session and the PowerPoints will be available. I will send out a link for the download of the PowerPoints as well as to listen to uh, this recorded webinar to everyone who has registered. And at this time, I'd like to uh, take any questions and invite our operator, Nicole, back on to help us. As a reminder, in order to ask a question, please press star 1 on your telephone keypad. Again, that's star 1. We'll pause for just a moment to compile the Q&A roster. And we do have a question from the line of Mary Simmons. Hi, this is Mary Simmons from Florida A&M University. Hi, Mary. Hi, I um, I really enjoyed the webinar, um, and you gave um, some good points. I, I have the book, and I, we were contemplating having our incoming students coming in the fall, so we were going to adopt this book for them. And as I read it and saw all the all of the animations, that is what I really really like because it helped explain it the procedures or whatever the chapter is better. So I just wanted to let you know that I, I also think the book is very, very, very good and um, we will be adopting this book in the fall for our incoming students. Well, that's excellent. I really appreciate that. And as you work through it, uh, please don't hesitate to contact me. You know, I, I uh, you're at A&M in, in Florida, right? That's correct. Uh, Patrick is an old buddy of mine. Uh, I think he's kind of retired at this point. Do you know him? Yes, sir. Uh huh. Yes, sir. He's retired. Yeah. Well, if you run into him, please give him my best. Uh, he's he's a great respiratory therapist as well. I sure will. I have one other question. With the student resources, um, does it like I have one book and I have a workbook with it, but when I give them the assignments in the workbook, they're also provided the answers. So it's like they're not really doing the worksheets; they're just copying the answers. Is that something you have in your student resources too with 
if there's a workbook, they have all of that stuff available to them? Well, at this point, there's not a separate published workbook. It's that it's all sort of integrated into the Navigant 2. Uh, and Grace, maybe you'd like to talk a little bit about that. Sure, sure. Uh, Mary, the online Navigate 2 kind of acts as an online workbook, if you will. So there are chapter quizzes um, and a final exam already loaded in there. As an instructor, you can choose to add questions to each of the chapter quizzes or the midterm or final um, or to, to edit them if you'd like. Uh, you can add additional quizzes in there and create your own using the bank of questions that are in Navigate 2. Okay. And um, we, can, we, we can show you that. So now that you've adopted um, the book, we can set you up with the instructor access to the Navigate and um, get you some training on that and just show you around in, in the actual learning management system. I think you'll really like it. Okay, thank you. Did you have any other questions, Mary? No? Okay, Mary, we'll have your rep get in touch with you and um, we'll set you up with the training for the Navigate too. Thank okay, you so much for good. your questions. Thank you. Excellent. Again, to ask a question, please press star 1 on your telephone keypad. And we have no further questions. Okay, I'll wait uh, a few minutes just to see if anyone else would like to ask a question. You can hit the star 1, or you can type a question in on our chat box over to the right of your online screen. But as I mentioned, we uh, have been recording this webinar, so the, the link to view it at a later date will be available, as well as um, a link to download the PowerPoints. You can feel free to share these with uh, colleagues or anyone else uh, reviewing the text along with you. Uh, we do thank you for your time. Um, I'm also putting uh, some information up here on the screen where you can uh, go online to our website at go.jblearning.com slash Shelody. Uh, that's the catalog page for this book. You can request a review copy right on our website or uh, request access to the instructor resources to take a look at those. You can get in touch with your health professions account uh, rep online via go.jblearning.com slash find a rep where you can call us at 800-832-0034. And we have many other um, resources for respiratory care and introductory health professions courses on our website. So as you're speaking with your rep and you have any other needs, please feel free to let us know and we'll see where we can um, help to fill those needs. Do we okay, have any and other I wanna, questions? Yeah, I just want to thank everybody for participating. Uh, and please you know, feel free to contact any of us if you've got uh, any specific questions uh, afterwards and we'd be happy to try and answer them. And we have no Thank further you, questions. Thank you, Nicole. Thank you, Dr. Shelley. That's uh, gracious of you to offer to answer questions. And we can, uh, through our sales reps, put people in, in touch with you. So thank you again, Dr. Shelley, for being with us today. I really appreciate your time and your thorough overview of your text. Um, and we're very excited to present this to instructors. And we hope that you will review it and consider adopting it for your course. All righty. Thank you all. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. This concludes today's conference call. You may now disconnect.